17% of all injuries in Olympic gymnasts are spine injuries. In fact, 11% or 1 in 10 gymnasts will have this particular type of injury. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 17-year-old gymnast who came to my office with lower back pain after undergoing a back bend. She underwent some chiropractic treatment that did not help, so she ended up undergoing an x-ray followed by a CT scan of her lumbar spine that shows this spine fracture. Wait, are you telling me she has a broken back? Yeah. Actually, I am. She has a type of spine fracture called a pars defect or a spondylolysis. It's in the part of our back called the pars and is susceptible to fracture, particularly in young athletes. In sports such as gymnastics, cheerleading, football, or in other sports in which you hyperextend and twist your spine, you are susceptible to breaking this bone in your back. Some of you may remember this story from a few months ago where Brittany Mahomes announced that she had a broken back. And Brittany is an avid athlete and played soccer in college. PARS is the name of a region in our lower back that connects the anterior part of our back to the backside. In our spine, when we talk about the anatomy of the lower back, we have the vertebral bodies, which are labeled L3, L4, L5, S1, the discs in between, which are these blue things, and then the back part of bone back here, where we have the facet joints, as well as the spinous process, and a small part of bone called the pars interarticularis. The pars, which is pointed out by this arrow right here, is a thin part of bone that is critical in the ring of structures in our lower back. And this ring contains all the nerves in our lower back. And unfortunately, it can be a source where you can get a stress fracture with repetitive hyperextension of the back and other stresses that are put on the lumbar spine. Here is an axial CT showing a unilateral pars fracture or a pars fracture on one side of the spine. And here you can see that the lamina and the pars here is intact. I did show this particular x-ray and this is an oblique x-ray demonstrating the fracture right here, which is really subtle finding. On this oblique x-ray, we're looking for the Scotty dog sign. And if the Scotty dog has a collar, which is right in the level of the pars, it may help us identify a pars fracture. And I'll be honest, it's a little hard to identify all the time on x-ray findings alone. And MRI and CT scans are often useful in making the diagnosis. The critical radiological finding that I showed on this patient's case is the lack of a spondylolisthesis in her spine. Spondylo what? This is a cartoon depiction of a normal pars. Here is an example of a spondylolysis. And here is an example of a spondylolisthesis. And the difference between this and this is on the spondylolisthesis, you have a slippage of one vertebrae on the other, causing a shift or abnormal motion in the spine. Now this is contrasted to this x-ray that does show a spondylolisthesis where the L5 ends here and the S1 ends here. So you see a slippage on one vertebrae on the other. A spondylolisthesis is more likely to occur if the pars fractures are on each side of the spine, meaning the right and left side. Our patient only had a fracture on one side of her spine, hence why she had that focal pain over her left lower back. The good news is we typically start with conservative treatment in a spondylolysis or a spondylolisthesis, and neither one of those diagnoses means that they're absolutely going to need surgery. However, an instability in the spine or a slippage or spondylolisthesis in the spine is more likely to progress to a surgical problem than the spondylolysis. In an acute fracture like in our patient, treatment is often rest and sometimes bracing. Medications such as over-the-counter anti-inflammatories may help with the pain. Load modification is also important to help reduce stress on the lower back. We almost always recommend conservative treatment starting with physical therapy. In the acute phase or right after the fracture, the goal of therapy is to help reduce pain and inflammation in the area. In the repair and remodeling phase of the fracture, working on progressive strength of the lower back is critically important. Strengthening the lower back as well as helping with your core strength is incredibly important for back protection. Getting stronger is not only safe, but it's critically important in preventing injury, not only in gymnastics, but in any sport. Working on skills, loading and proper technique is really important for their future as well. Injections may also play a role in the healing process to help with pain in the area. The long-term concern in a patient with a spondylolysis is the progression of developing a spondylolisthesis 
or that instability of the spine. And if that patient fails conservative treatment, we may consider surgery. Surgery in these cases often entails a spinal fusion where we use screws and rods to help pin one level together. Here's an x-ray of the lumbar spine that shows what a spinal fusion may entail. So particularly in young athletes, we try to avoid this if the patient does not need it. In our patient, after a period of rest, activity modifications, with progression of therapy, her pain went away. Because of her concern of progression of the injury, she elected to stop participating in gymnastics. And unfortunately, this is not an uncommon story. This is an example of what type of stresses our bodies undergo when participating in sports like this and further shows how amazing athletes like this truly are and how amazing the human body is. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case. And stay tuned to my channel over the next few days as I continue to bring you this amazing Olympic content.